Hi, Bob. Yeah, yeah. hi, Bob. Obviously, we're jumping decade by decade. Would you guys like to see us catch up to present day? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's season five. That's been announced, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do I the mean, announcement now. <laughs> yeah, no, the long term plan of the show is always to jump in time each season so that eventually we could get to. Uh, to the present, potentially, and even maybe the future. Mm -hmm. We'll see, we'll see. It's only the beginning. And I mean, obviously things are getting messy and on Mars. Should we be preparing for another confrontation with the Russians? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should prepare to hold on tight to your shorts because it gets crazy. The, the second half of the season, um, ben has said it before, so has Matt, that it feels like we just have season finale after season finale after season finale. I yeah. mean, episodes seven, eight, nine, and 10 just ramp up in a way that um, I remember reading the scripts and having to just like close my laptop and be like, I need a minute. This is a lot to take in. Um, so I think our audience will be just totally floored when they get to the finale. I know I was. Yeah, and I mean, Cynthia, with Kelly's relationship that's going on, I mean, how do you feel about what's coming? How do I personally feel, or how does Kelly feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, both. Um, you know, Kelly's young, um, and she was living in the moment and completely human. Um, obviously, when I read what was going on, I had to, I emailed the guys. <laughs> I was like, wait, uh, what's happening? What is, what's happening? But yeah, it's, uh, she goes on quite the journey, um, which I think is fitting, because you really get to see her grow from the 17-year-old kid who was fighting for her spot and standing up to her parents to now, you know, she's up in Mars and making some mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. making some whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of that too. Yeah, and I mean, Coral being down on the ground and having like being hardcore gaslit by Margot about those engine yeah. designs, I mean, how do, how do you feel about what's coming? I mean, um, there's a lot coming. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say because you know our show loves to set things up for the final two episodes, mm -hmm. and so that's where everything always hits a uh, 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 point. So, so yeah. I mean, it's 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 intense and it's exciting to do intense things, but it's intense. Do you think her relationship with Margot is like at risk here? Um. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I think that's a that's always been a, a really strange, troubled relationship, and I think um, they're they're tested time and time again that relationship. Yeah. It's hard to do interviews like when you have like three episodes yeah. left. Yeah, you know? I know, like, oh, right? Uh -huh. Usually you do interviews like yeah. before and after uh -huh. the season, and now it's like. Uh, what do you, mm. um, cause I'm really good at spoiling shit, so. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you tell. <laughs> Joel's like, the dog dies in the end. Yeah, you should be scared. Yeah. <laughs> I, this has been killing me since I saw it. Why do you think Ed let Danny stay on the ship, breaking medical protocol, even though like immediately after we see him admit to Karen, like, I don't think Danny's okay. Like, what's going on there? Well, I think there's like several things going on at the same time. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, I think Ed is old school, so he doesn't, you know, really buy into all this psychological bullshit. Uh, and then, and then I think it's also, uh, you know, Danny is, you know, it's like his son, and and he, it was his, it's Ed's dead son's best friend that is the son of his. Best friend that is dead. So so you know, th Danny should be his son. It's like it, it, he should he should be the like the vessel that heals two wounds. But you know, he's not not on a good track. You know, it's not working out. Yeah, Casey, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's I. I to piggyback off of him, I mean, I feel like he's just sometimes, I mean, maybe ignorance is the wrong word, but ignorant to the fact that um, Danny is uh, as uh, maybe not in the best mental state, maybe not the best, uh, <laughs> making the best decisions at this point in his life. Um, no. 
and that maybe he shouldn't have control over some things. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's 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 how it goes, and so. Yeah. Yeah. Human beings are always gonna want to see what's over that next hill. Looking at this season as a whole, I mean, obviously there's two glaring missing people, Tracy and Gordo. I mean, yeah. what was it like going from, there were some fan favorite characters and going into this season without them? Yeah, well that was like, you know, they're, on the one hand, you're you're not getting to spend time with two of your friends. Yeah. And, and me and Dorman, we got, we, were, we got really close. So yeah. I was really bummed about that. Cause that also means with him, he's gonna, live somewhere else, so you don't see him for a couple of years. Mm. Um, but uh, but then it, it was something, I don't know, I got really emotionally affected by it myself. And like in, in the last scenes that we did in season two, I got really like affected by just yeah. the thought of them not being there. I think everyone sort of felt that. And yeah. mm -hmm. it becomes this twilight zone of, you know, sort of in between where there's a little bit of the character emotions and then when you have the personal relationship emotion that also feeds into it and, and we were all sort of mourning them but, but then when you, when you like break it down it's like, I mean, we're not really in the same scenes anyway so, you know, how many times would we have seen each other? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. 10 times over a season, you know, it's mm -hmm. not that big of a deal yeah. but, but, you, but it's like this in between state where you have some of the characters' feelings and then your feelings, and I think we were all like mourning them. A yeah, little bit. really yeah. heartbroken. Yeah. And I also think like you know the three of us, Michael, Joel, and I created this little fun unit, season yeah. one, that was just like so delightful and kind of became like a real linchpin. And I think the world of you know for all mankind. Hi Bob. Yeah, yeah. hi Bob. <laughs> um, and so having that kind of fracture, it really did feel like, okay, we kind of have to start again in some ways. Um, but then along the way, we picked up some new folks, <laughs> yeah. which was amazing, yeah. you know? Well, so. We love to have all you, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the unique nature of the show, you know, because we're jumping through time. You know, we always knew early on, Ron, Matt, and I, that it is going to evolve. The cast will change as you go. People will come in, people will go away. And I think it's easy to plan that, but I have to say, like to what Joel was saying, you grow so close to the actors and the characters. And even for us as the writers in the writer's room, it took us so long to really, really come to terms with that ending. Um, but because it was so hard for us, we knew it would be so hard for the audience. And in the end, that's, yeah. mm -hmm. that's the job, you know? Absolutely. Listen, we're gonna have to invent like some cryotechnology or something to keep y'all around because <laughs> like, if we're gonna keep going, I mean, we're gonna keep going. We generally have yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much Joe can walk with us. Come on, let's. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. It's been absolutely wonderful. Like I said, Thank I'm you. a huge Thank fan you. of the show and Thank I can't you. wait to see what comes next. Thank you.